this bloke and what the bloody hell is he wearing? Hello guys, Tommy here, and today, yes, we're talking about this armoured bastard. He was briefly shown in the BF1 reveal trailer, brandishing what looks to be a machine gun and looking quite menacing. Now you're probably thinking, hang on Tommy, I'm no history wizard, but I know that Iron Man didn't bloody fight in World War I. You can't fool me, dice! And you'd be okay to think that. But in fact, this type of armour was very much a part of World War I, and before we go into what exactly it is and how it worked, time for a brief history of armour in the Great War, starting with the Allied side. Firstly, armour was not something every Tom, Dick and Harry was privy to. Oh no, 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 quite the opposite. In fact, it's estimated that only 2% of the British Army ever wore any type of substantial armour. At the start of the war, you were basically given some car keys and a cloth cap and sent into battle with nothing to protect your precious organs. Quite grim. A few years later, the famous steel helmet was introduced to troops, but to be honest, that was kind of shite as well. Headshot. As the war went on, some clever folk back in Tommy HQ thought, mm, Do you know what would be excellent? What, sir? Mm, if all our men stopped perishing to gunfire, mm, yes. E guns, you're right. What should we do? Well, I don't bloody know. We could strap bits of metal to them. Uh, no, that's silly. Uh, we, we will develop an armour that is suitable for the front lines, yes. And, yep, yeah, they started strapping bits of metal to soldiers. Breastplates and steel link waistcoats were cumbersome and reserved almost exclusively for stationary positions, machine gun nests and the like. But there were other forms of armour developed for soldiers on the move, such as the Dayfield waistcoat, sort of like an early Kevlar vest. Unfortunately, all these armours were still quite limited in their effectiveness, really only protecting you from the odd bit of shrapnel. Most bullets would still go through the armour and kill you dead. Near the end of the war, however, a clever chap called Bashford Dean came up with a full battle harness for soldiers including front and back torso protection, pauldrons, couteurs, van braces, and a spangly new helmet. And it all weighed just 15 pounds. That's 25 pounds lighter than a modern soldier's gear. Additionally, the whole harness was cushioned with vulcanized sponge rubber, which meant it could potentially stop pistol and rifle fire over a thousand yards. However, this battle harness was only used for a grand total of 45 days, right at the very end of the war during the AEF offensive at the Moose Argonne. Bloody hell, Bashford, a bit late, mate. So now you're thinking, Tommy, none of that explains mega armor bar Yes, yes, I'm getting to it. The armor used by Armor Bastard in the trailer is in fact German in its origin. The Axis armor of World War I was quite similar to the Allies in that they too developed large cumbersome breastplates designed to be used for soldiers in machine gun nests referred to as Sappenpanzer armor. But unfortunately, it was about as much use as a chocolate teapot. It might stop some low velocity shrapnel if you were lucky, but everything else, nah, you got no chance. Towards the end of the war, the Axis forces ramped up production of what was referred to as lobster armour due to its layered nature. It was made of nickel and silicon plates and again was very heavy. However, this armour could stop pistol fire and save you from a hot stabbing with the bayonet. Rifle fire would likely still penetrate it though. <laughs> Bugger. This lobster armour is what I believe the armour bastard from the BF1 trailer is wearing, albeit with some additions here and there, such as pauldrons and arm guards. But what of the mask? Well, that mask is in fact a Sappenpanzer Gesicht mask. I've probably said that wrong. Issued to snipers and machine gunners usually in static positions, made of hardened steel and strapped to your head with a cage. It was actually rather effective at stopping most projectiles, unless of course they were point blank. Uh, then you were fucked. Now the fact that Armour Bastard in the trailer appears to be rampaging around like a mad twazzock isn't really what this armour was designed for due to its immense weight. So we can assume that this armour will make you very slow indeed, likely meaning you won't be able to sprint or jump. How you equip this armour is also a mystery, but the most likely scenario is that it will be a battle pickup of some kind, maybe even for Axis only. I highly doubt you'll be able to equip it into your soldier's loadout, else basically it would just be Iron Man Wars. So there we have it. That is the story of Armour Bastard. And before I go, I'll leave you with the true story of another Armour Bastard, Dr. Guy Brewster. He was responsible for developing this monstrosity, and during World War I, he tried to sell it to the American army. He in fact turned up to a military barracks dressed in his creation and offered soldiers to try and bring him down with gunfire, which they did so gleefully. Apparently Dr. Guy was showered in a hail of bullets from soldiers, which he survived, proving that, you know, his armour worked. He then told the soldiers afterwards that being showered with bullets was, and I quote, one tenth the shock which he experienced when struck by a sledgehammer. I mean, what the fuck did this guy get up to in his personal life? The armour was put to use briefly by the Americans, but was soon after deemed unsuitable for trench life. It was absurdly encumbering, hard to move around in, and not only did the helmet part not turn, but the visor reduced your visibility to almost zero. Nice try, Guy, but I'm afraid turning a man into a miniature tank with no offensive capabilities and the movement pattern of a drunk snail was not one which took off. However, 
maybe we will see the Brewster armor in BF1, possibly as the allied version of the armor bastard. Who knows? So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like. That would be great. And please leave a comment below with your thoughts on the armor bastard. Until next time, sweet dreams, internet friends. Oh,